Hi folks, thanks for tuning in and welcome back. As some of you know, I'm going to be going on an African safari uh, shortly and I wanted to share my loadout with you all. I previously indicated in another video that I'm going to be using this bag for carry-on and to EDC it and I'm also going to be hunting with this bag. So I'm going to be taking this on the plane. This is going to be my carry-on bag. And before I set it by the door, I wanted to share it with you and just show you some of the contents how I have it outfitted for this specific trip that I'm going to Africa. And on the outside of the bag, I have these little pouches that I added to it, these Everly Stock mini pouches. And this one is empty. I don't have anything in it. I'm not sure what I might put in it, perhaps some ammo or something else. Do have a little hand sanitizer here, and on this side I have another pouch. And this one I have nitrile gloves in there, just two pairs, and they're going to ride in here. And over here, I'm going to put water in here once I clear security. I'll put a bottle of water on each side, and this way I have fresh water with me as I'm going through the airport and on the plane as well. Now, on top here, I have a little Grimlock, in case I want to put a baseball cap on here. I can attach it. I also have a Dominator clip here. I'm not sure I'll use that, but it's there in case I need it. And a little whistle here for the trail. This pocket here, I'm keeping my sunglasses. And let me just back this up so you can get a view. And it's a pair of Maui gems that I have in there. The name of the model is Breakwall, and this is the HT lens, Hotel Tango. And it's a green lens. I, I also have the bronze ones, but these are not as dark, and they're great for peering into those shadows. And they really brighten things up, and they're very lightweight. So I'll be using these for both hunting and leisure. And these are the Maui Jim Breakwall. And they're just going to ride in this pocket right here. And then on this side, I left this pocket empty on purpose. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there, but I wanted at least one empty pocket for some miscellaneous items. Now, let me spin you back around to the front before we get into the bag itself. Here I have a very small first aid kit. And it's just some OTC, some over-the-counter medication, just something I can get to, some hauls, Advil, and a few other items. And that's just going to ride in here in this little pocket. I try to put the sunglasses in here, but this pocket's too small. It just, uh, it's not going to hold the glasses. Back here in this uh, zippered area, I have my journal and a pair of headphones. This is just a pair that came with my smartphone, and I threw them in there. And I don't know that I'll need them, because generally the, the plane or the, uh, the airline will give you headphones, especially on an international flight. But I do have my journal in here, and this is what I'll be documenting my hunt with and keeping notes. And it's just a very small notepad with uh, assorted pens. And this, this will just ride in here. Should I need to get to a pen or a piece of paper quickly, at least have a, I have access to it. So let me spin you back around this way. And we'll take a look at the sides here. Show you what I have in here before I get into the main compartment. Over here, I have just some hard candy something to uh, munch on during the flight. It's a very long flight, uh, about 16 hours, and a bunch of sugar. Trail mix, candy bars, and more snacks. So that's what I have in there. You really can't put too much in here because it'll blow out the pocket and then it's hard to utilize this pocket here. Uh, one of my viewers asked if this is big enough to hold a spotting scope and the answer to the question is yes, it is big enough to hold the spotting scope. As you can see, look how big it is. And it'll work 
so long as you don't put anything in this side and you don't put anything in the interior pocket. What I mean by the interior pocket is this pocket here. So if you were to keep this pocket empty, there would be sufficient room for, uh, for a spotting scope in here. Now, in this little pocket here, I just have a stirry pen in case I need to address some mortar issues. And I have some extra batteries. I have extra batteries for my binoculars, CR123 for my EDC light, and some AAA batteries, and I also have some AA batteries for my headlamp. So this is my this will address my power needs. Over here I have a small tripod, and I don't know if you could see that or not. I'll pull it out. It's not a big deal. And this is a Gobi, and it's just a very small tripod. And you can also tie this or cinch it down around perhaps uh, a rail on a truck or a boat or something like that if you wanted to mount either the camera or a GoPro to it, and that would work. And then on this pocket here, on this side pocket, let me just show you what I have in here. I have a small toiletry kit, and this is for the plane. And it's just some deodorant, toothpaste, and a toothbrush, and some some hand wipes to clean up with. I also have some wet wipes and some hearing protection in case it's noisy or a crying baby, and something to cover my eyes. And I have some seat covers and a small towel that I picked up from REI to wash up with. Again, it's a really long flight and it's nice to freshen up. You run out of things to do and sometimes I don't sleep very well on these flights. And it's nice to go to the uh, restroom and freshen up a little bit. Throw a little water on your face, brush your teeth, perhaps change your shirt, something like that. Now, in this front pocket, I have an extra shirt freshen up with and this is one of those smart wool micro t-shirts it's very fine they're not itchy and this is one of my favorite t-shirts it's very nice and lightweight doesn't retain a lot of odor and it wicks and it dries really quickly so I have an extra shirt with me and that's all I have in there in the top in the main compartment I just have a hat a little browning hat I also added a small light, this is a nano light that I added to the drawstring and it's nice to shine in here when you're on the plane to see if, if you're looking for something. This is the case to the camera I'm filming with and this is just a remote and over here I have an extra battery. So I'll set that down over there. Now let's talk about this. This is really important. This is my document holder. These are going to be all my files for the trip, all my paper files. And you need quite a bit of paper files when you travel on one of these uh, safari trips, especially a hunting trip. Because I have to pull a permit, a temporary permit, to carry my firearms. So, what I have here is a U.S. Customs and Border Protection 4457 form inside here. And it's really for proof of ownership for my firearm. I also have a completed 520 form from the South African Police Services and this is going to be for the temporary permit. Motivation letter for the police and this is something new that they started where they want hunters to write a motivation letter regarding the hunt and where they're going to be hunting and the type of animals they're going to be taking. And it's a very short letter, it's not very long at all, this is a sample of one and it's just basically your name, your passport, what region you're going to be going to with the organization, the type of firearm you'll be carrying, and exactly where you'll be hunting. I'll be near Botswana, and I'll be going after a Plains game, and I just listed uh, a few as an example. I also have all the contacts. The contacts on location and the contacts back home, my emergency contacts. Some medical information, my global rescue contract is in there, 
and I have a tipping schedule or some tipping guidelines because everyone gets greased in Africa. And then what I did to back myself up a little bit more, I scanned the critical items and then I emailed them to my smartphone so they're, they're, they are on my Galaxy S5 and I have them loaded up. So this is my document folder, very, very important and I want to carry this with me. Now I also have a GoPro and this is a new piece of equipment I've been using. Uh, I'm not real crazy about it because it doesn't have zoom and I know it's going to be an issue with some of the farther shots uh, especially if you're shooting in brush but when you're a one-man show you, you have to improvise there's really no replacement for a cameraman somebody following you around and looking through a viewfinder and giving you the, those quality shots but this is the GoPro Hero 3 Plus and I do have it in a matte black case so it doesn't reflect or spook the animals and this one's fully charged I have a 64 the card in here is a 64 which is the biggest one I could find and remote control I can keep that in my pocket some accessories here the bolts the screws the transfer cable or the charging cable and then back here I have all the batteries. So I have one battery in it. I have three extra batteries. These are all fully charged and they're giving me about an hour and a half to two hours life depending on whether you use the Wi-Fi or not. It seems like the Wi-Fi really chews up the camera. And if you leave the viewfinder on in the back here, I purchased the, uh, the, the viewfinder as an accessory. That really chews up the battery as well. So I, I could see that being an issue when you're out in the field you know eight or ten hours and back here I have just a bunch of extra cards just a bunch of 64's that I purchased and I don't have a computer with me so whatever I capture is going to be on these cards I won't have the ability to download footage and examine it so I'll have to wait till I get home other than perhaps viewing it on the uh, viewfinder but again then you get into battery issues if you start reviewing it and then it's just the owner's manual on the back so this is what I'll have as well as this camera. I'll use the uh, camera that I'm filming with now to do the close-up shots. I'll just take it out of my pack and walk up to the animals as they're laying on the ground and maybe do some commentary. And last but not least, I have my binoculars in there. I didn't feel safe putting them in my bag, so I'm going to carry them on. These are the GeoVid. Uh, 10 by 42 uh, range finding binoculars. I previously reviewed them and I'm going to be using this uh, this harness, this lockdown harness to carry them in and this is uh, the best one I could find for the job because it keeps them in here securely and they don't swing around on your chest. They, they ride tight and I also removed the metal ring on here and I put these keepers on here and as you can hear, as you can listen, there's no noise completely silent and this is what I wanted I didn't want that that piece of metal jingle in there so I'll be using these lockdowns and uh, with these geovids on the hunt so that pretty much does it I wanted to give you an overview because once I uh, once I pack this up and put it by the door I'm done with it I'll also bring you some insight on the clothing and some of the gear that I'm bringing I'll share the firearm as well and then it's wheels up. So thanks for tuning in and see you all next time.